Uh, hi, William. Good morning. I am recording an interview today with the founder of Toastmasters Hungary and the founder of Speak Academy and the author of a book entitled Speak Your Way to a Better Life, uh, William Banker or Willie. And the topic of our interview is how to handle a hostile or hostile audience. William, could you uh, give a definition of a hostile audience? A hostile audience, I would reduce to a couple of hostile people. Mm -hmm. If everybody in the audience is hostile, then you have a pretty big problem. And you may need police help mm -hmm. to get out of there. Uh, normally, that's not the case. You have some people who are hostile trolls, people who desperately want to get some attention, and they will and can make life difficult for you. For me, a hostile person is somebody who wants to make the situation uncomfortable for me to the point of potentially embarrassing me in front of my audience. That mm -hmm. would be a hostile Mm -hmm. a troll or a person. And how can we prepare for a conversation with uh, such a hostile person? One if we the... know, uh, William, uh, if we know that, for example, we are going to meet such a person, uh, because unfortunately, sometimes, uh, sometimes we have. Uh, so that, that is absolutely correct. One of the best ways to prepare is to prepare for a virtual hostile person. That means that you have pre-rehearsed five lines that are memorized. Mm -hmm. You store them in your back pocket. And if you have a situation that surfaces where you need to be able to handle a hostile person, instead of counting on your creativity to come to your rescue, you just simply reach to your pocket and pull out one of these lines. If you're a comedian, if you're a politician, if you are someone who speaks often in a potentially hostile environment, you need to have pre-rehearsed lines. It won't help you for everything. I doubt you can ever get prepared for 100%. But it'll give you a feeling of comfort that most of the incoming uncomfortable comments you can handle. Oh, uh, this is a wonderful idea. Uh, could you give such lines? I'm sure that you should have such lines for yourself. I was reading from a, a, a lady's work. Well, it, it's partly what is called wit mm -hmm. in English. And wit means that you have a response, quick response that fits the situation without having to raise your voice, get angry, be mean. I'll give you a couple examples. Mm -hmm. Ronald Reagan, who was a well-respected speaker before he became president of the United States, he would go on a campaign tour. And one incident in California after a speech, a woman went up to him and said, if you were St. Peter, I wouldn't vote for you. Okay. Which you can imagine is intended to hurt him, to offend him. Mm -hmm. And he calmly looked at her and said, ma'am, if I were St. Peter, you wouldn't be in my district. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. Okay, a yes. very subtle way of putting her in her place. Mm -hmm. What the worst thing you could do is to engage the troll, the hostile person, because they're looking to start a fight. Mm -hmm. It's similar to when you're walking down the street and somebody who's having a really bad day looks at you and makes a provocative comment, who are you staring at when you weren't staring at anybody? They're looking to provoke an, a, an argument, a fight. 
a lady who's a, uh, a seasoned speaker in the United States got tired of people asking her questions, private or personal questions, after her presentations. So she rehearsed the following line. As soon as somebody asked her something which was too personal, I'm flattered that you assume we know each other well enough for you to ask a question like that. In it is a compliment, but there is also a strong message that we do not have a relationship that allows you to ask me a personal question like that. And it, that needs, and it needs to be delivered with force, which is one of the reasons why you need to rehearse it or rehearse something like that. Because it doesn't do you any good to have a great sentence delivered with no impact. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 I, it, it flatters me. Uh, 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 you've lost whatever power that sentence would have had. Yes, this is a, a brilliant idea. How do you recommend uh, we should rehearse certain things? So, so at first we... Uh, just like consult some books on witticisms. Uh, uh, maybe we listen to some speeches and afterwards we create our own lines. Or do you have such mantras for uh, for our listeners? You can do both. Uh, okay. It's difficult to... Uh, I've looked for books that have nothing but a collection of wit. Mm -hmm. And there are so many witty responses that there are too many responses even if you're a, a, a speaker, a regular speaker, you're not going to run into that many different situations where you'll need a hundred pages of witty responses. My suggestion would be to think back through the last three years of speech uh, speeches or presentations and work on remembering what were some of the unquestioned or uh, uncomfortable questions that you had. There are a couple reasons why it would be uncomfortable. Number one, it steps across a line that's too personal. Okay, The only person who can define that line is you. I know you don't want to, and oh, I wish the world was full of people who loved each other and we could hug yes, each other. Yes, yes. Okay, but that's not the world we live in. You need to define the line. And one of the best pieces of advice that I learned from Dr. Phil was when he said, we teach other people how to treat us. If they overstep the line and you don't say something, you have sent them a message that says that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I agree with you because if someone shows that he or she is disrespectful, Somehow we have to show this line. Right. Uh, but the and question this, is how? So how to show this line? You you have just given now some examples, but right. uh, for example, what to do if uh, you have a presentation, for example, or if you're invited for an interview and there are some people who just show uh, you their disrespect, they insult you. So how should you uh, draw this line? Okay. It, let's say there are some people who, let, let's say there are 100 people mm -hmm. and a couple of them are just being idiots. Yes, we, we always have them. We have those. You need to have self-confidence. Mm -hmm. If you don't have self-confidence to do what I'm about to tell you, it will lose its impact. So if you want to become a really good speaker, you will need to work on getting the self-confidence just like you are doing on it. You're doing a brilliant job. Thank you. Thank you. The you need the self-confidence is because you are going to have to define for the audience and for your two trolls what is and what is not acceptable. And you'll need to be able to do it in a way without getting emotionally engaged. If you raise your voice and start screaming at them, Nothing will make them happier mm -hmm. than their ability to remove the calmness around you. 
that would be a victory for the other side. You'll need to deliver a line and the following line is, let's say you know the person and the person is John. John, I would love to discuss that topic with you when you and I are both in a different mood in a different setting. Mm -hmm. And no apologies, no repeating it. It needs to be delivered with force. I'm assuming I'm not the only person who had a father that when there were certain things he said. Just once. Once. Yes, it never absolutely. had to be repeated. It was not easily misunderstood. And you need to deliver in a case like that, you need to deliver that message. There are some people who have that as part of their job to be able to deliver a message with force. One of those is a police officer. Mm -hmm. If the police officer tells you, you need to do something, that most often is a very clear message. It's not open for vote. It's not a democratic situation where let's talk about it. You do what they say. And they need to be forceful in delivering that message. It needs to be 100% clear to the other person. Because, for example, and from my accent, you can tell that I come from a different part of the world where they will use a gun. Mm -hmm. And in all fairness, and I don't want to discuss whether that's right or wrong, but in all fairness, they most often will make a very clear and forceful command. You do this, you drop the gun, you stop running, or else. And most often, we only hear about the cases where it doesn't happen, but most often, people drop the gun and stop running and follow the command of the police officer. Mm -hmm. Same in the military. If your superior says, Anna, you will do this, you do it. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. So, yes. And you're running the show. If you're the speaker, you're running the show. You need to show the other 98 people I'm going to use a Latin term that you, the speaker, has balls. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, years ago, uh, I was doing my studies in psychology and in coaching, and there, uh, we had some tasks. Uh, we had a number of workshops, and uh, we were asked to prepare if, for example, we have the so-called uh, hostile uh, people uh, in our surroundings, how we should react. And one of the things we did was uh, we were asked to stand in circles of maybe three or four people. And for example, uh, now you are going to deliver a speech and everyone else was supposed to say some very nasty comments, absolutely nasty comments. So I remember I had never... <laughs> Uh, uh, I had never used such nice, nasty comments in my life that things which 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 uh, uh, which uh, they ask us to to do and the person who received all these nasty comments had just to to smile and had to say thank you very much thank you for your comment so simply to show that uh, for example what the other person wants you the other person wants you some uh, emotional reaction maybe to explore in anger, maybe to start crying, maybe uh, to feel frustration and you do not show it. So right. what uh, What do you think? Is it a good idea, for example? I think it's uh, a brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one tactic. Mm -hmm. You need to be strong in that you don't personalize the comments and how you respond. Mm -hmm. You do. So I, I'm going to give you an example of something that I thought was bri uh, brilliant. I just read Giselle Bündchen's book, one of the books that she wrote. And she was a tall girl when she was in high school. And she had large, you know what? 
-hmm. And people would make comments to her about how big her, you know, what were. And her father taught her that when she hears that from somebody else, not to get upset and not to start to argue, add something to it. Yes, I have large, you know what? And I also have a big personality. But this is wonderful. This is Isn't wonderful. that a great line? Mm -hmm. Yes. My parents also actually, they uh, taught me when I went to kindergarten, they taught me never start fight yourself. But if someone fights against you or if someone hits you, you hit back. So, right. so, so, so this is what, what um, I was taught how to do. And uh, uh, William, you have just mentioned not to person, uh, not to take certain things personally. But for this, you really need some very high self esteem. Uh, because, for yes, example, right. because, because someone can find something just to crash you. So, how would you, what would you recommend? How should uh, uh, people develop their high self esteem so that they do not react to some very stupid commands? Okay. One way is the way you and I and many of the people we help are doing it, and that is develop their confidence in their ability to communicate. Mm -hmm. There's no substitute for that. The second is, is when you hear something, you need to ensure that you do not begin to repeat it to yourself. Mm -hmm. I have a friend of mine, she's more of an acquaintance, and she is 150 kilos. Mm -hmm. Okay. When she was a teenage girl, a young teenage girl, 13, her father made a mean comment to her and said, you're fat. Mm -hmm. Her father said that once and she repeated it 60,000 times. Mm -hmm. The moment you open the door and start to repeat it and start to play with that, but they said I was ugly, but I'm not ugly. But they said I was. As soon as you go into that conversation, you're going to have a challenge. You've now opened the door and you don't want to. One of the tips I give people is never negotiate. For example, in the morning when you make a decision that I want to go out and exercise and it's five o'clock in the morning, the alarm goes off, it's warmer under the sheets than it is outside. The moment you start to negotiate, okay, what if I don't go running today and I run twice as much tomorrow? It's not good. No, 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 it's no. We, we need self-discipline. Right. So, and, and the way to do that is to not negotiate. It is not, we don't negotiate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One of the best uh, pieces of advice I got for dieting is that a diet is an off and on kind of thing. And then there are rules. And a rule is the rule. There's no negotiation. It's the rule. It's a red light. If it's red, you stop. Mm -hmm. And have rules for yourself. For example, if you want to alter the way you eat, my rule is I do not eat carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise you could be tempted to go into the, okay, it's just a small piece of cake. What if I take the whipped cream off and I run an extra half kilometer tomorrow? Well, that's, uh, that's too late. You start negotiating with yourself, right? So you never open the door and start repeating the person's comment. Mm -hmm. And it is not a rational reaction on our part but if you stand up and said and give a speech and then somebody comes to you and says anna you're ugly it is difficult but it is also true that has nothing to do with you or your presentation uh, yes uh but you know uh william uh, i think that the vast majority of people they take these things very, very personally. So, I mean, yeah. I mean if you do not have uh, enough knowledge in psychology, so, and uh, in this case, just like immediately, uh, whenever someone tells you something negative, immediately you either attack back uh, 
or you uh, try to defend yourself. That's right. And uh, I keep referring to Dr. Phil. He's been such an important uh, mentor in my life and somebody I learned from. And he, the reason he makes as much money as he makes on this TV show, because he is willing to own his opinion. When he gets on the show, he's not trying to be everybody's friend. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. His simple rule is, it is not important for me to be liked by strangers. It's not part of the way I operate. Don't really care if you like me or not. I am a professional. He's a psychologist. And when it comes to his opinion about psychology, motivation, and behavior, he will tell you his professional opinion. The fact that you, Mr. or Mrs. audience member, don't agree with him, I'm a professional. Mm -hmm. That is my professional opinion. And I'm not here to be liked. And if you want your audience to like you, you're going to be in a whole lot of trouble. You're going to be exposed to the danger of trying to save that one person to come over to your side. But they don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And you don't need them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like Dr. Phil as well. Uh, a few years ago when I recorded uh, three interviews uh, with you, you, I remember you told me about him. And so yeah. I checked... Uh, a lot of his videos and i highly recommend uh, our listeners to uh, uh to go to his uh, youtube uh, channel william for example you present in front of 10 people or 20 people or 100 people and maybe there is only one person who is hostile or maybe two or three uh, people so but the vast majority of people are friendly uh, please tell us how we should prepare for such kind of communication. So maybe we deliver our lecture. Maybe this is a seminar. Maybe you are a politician who, who is going to talk in front of uh, some people. Uh, so what is your idea? Should we concentrate on two aggressive people, two hostile people who just look at you in a, a way that they're going to kill you? Or should we rather concentrate on happy people, on people who give you support, on people who smile, uh, on people who listen to you? Okay, a couple things. If you do have a couple of trolls, mm -hmm. my suggestion is to not pretend like they're not there mm -hmm. and send, you can tell in the poor, a person's intonation whether they are purposely trying to be an idiot or it's some kind of a professional discussion that they want to have. Those are two different categories. The second one I can work with, the first one I can't. Mm -hmm. You need to send a strong message to them. I'm willing to talk about that with you offline. Mm -hmm. So you recognize them, you tell them I'll address it offline. For them, much like a child who's throwing a tantrum, they need the other people to be their witnesses so they can see how strong they are. You know, oh, I really showed on. I, oh, there were 20 people there and they saw that I have the power. Okay, so go ahead and acknowledge them, but don't give it to them. Mm -hmm. A big mistake made often by CEOs and professional presenters is they'll give a presentation, let's say an hour, and then they leave 15 minutes for Q&A. Mm -hmm. Okay, I understand that's 45 minutes. That is not a good recipe. And the reason it's not a good recipe, because if you run into a troll in the last 15 minutes and it turns confrontational and it's over, that will be the impression and the feeling that the audience members take with them. The way to do that, to prevent something like that, being the lasting impression, is to hold a 50-minute speech, 15 minutes of Q&A, and then 10 minutes of wrap-up. Oh. So you are the one who defines the mood at the end of the speech. Mm -hmm. Big difference. Yeah, this is really great because just like if someone... Uh, 
tries crashing you or insulting you and afterwards <laughs> you immediately finish the whole impression will be no uh, will be terrible yes 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 but and the reason i go back to you know you mentioned self self esteem and self confidence is you unfortunately because of the trolls you now have a 18 other people who will see how you handle that situation and unfortunately if you're weak you're unsure you end up being destroyed by those two trolls mm -hmm. it will hurt your credibility if you are a true professional and understand your topic then you need to know that topic better than two trolls mm -hmm. and you're that is what makes you a professional that's why dr phil has no problem attracting the audience because just because somebody doesn't agree with him he doesn't care but they don't change the channel mm -hmm. yeah and there is an expression uh, let's agree to disagree that's right uh, and I mean, for me, uh, for me, actually, it's not a problem to listen to uh, someone's uh, argument, just like it's not a problem if I believe in God to, to hear that someone doesn't or vice versa. Or, for example, when we talk about political preferences, uh, because simply uh, I have the following idea that, that I have my own worldview, I have my own ideas, but I am not... Right. I'm right from my own perspective, but this is not that this should be supported by everyone. So it's absolutely fine if uh, if right. someone thinks in a different way. But what to do with people, what to do with people who just think, and unfortunately, no, these days, there are more and more uh, of such people who just think that my view is the only view. My truth is the only truth. Okay. Uh, and when they start their debates, they just crash error anyone who is there without any paying attention to another person. Okay. Uh, i break it into two questions and I'll give mm -hmm. you two answers from two different religions. Mm -hmm. uh, from the Christian standpoint, I've listened to several pastors who are mega church pastors, and their recommendation is to never approach with belief always approach with values mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because you can be an atheist and a Baptist and both agree Absolutely. that a strong family yes. is important, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And the best way to be able to get somebody to open up is to find areas of overlap. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you're an atheist and a Baptist, un until you start looking for things that you have in common, you're going to both stick to your own position. Okay, That's one approach. Even better than this was advice that I read from Kushner, the rabbi. Mm -hmm. He, because he is a rabbi and dresses accordingly and people know that he's a member of, uh, of, of a religious faith, his trolls will come up to him and they'll say, you know, I, there is no God. I don't believe in God hoping that they will provoke him into an argument. Mm -hmm. That's what trolls like to do. His answer, absolutely brilliant. He surprises the person by not doing that and instead poses a question to them or, or a, a request. Tell me about that God you don't believe in. Mm -hmm. There's, mm -hmm. There are probably areas that I don't believe in either. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the person who wanted to be the troll is now all of a sudden, oh, oh, wait a minute. And do you mm -hmm. see how he very elegantly flipped it and starts to make the other person talk about whatever the topic was that they brought up? I, I there are there are several people. Doctor Phil's one. Kushner's another one. 
there's a pastor out of Alabama, uh, Chris Hodges, but also some of these people, Warren Buffett had a piece of advice, one piece, I know he has a lot of things, but one piece of advice that he says changed his life. Think about this and how it applies in what we're talking about. When he was 20 years old, somebody said, Warren, you can always tell somebody to go to hell tomorrow. But tomorrow never comes uh, as a proverb says. You don't have to tell them to go to hell mm -hmm. today. Today, yes. Uh -huh. I mean, this is, I have never told anyone go to hell. Yes, but, 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 but so many, as a speaker, your recommendation or your, your gut reaction would be you go to hell and leave me alone. Yes. Um, if, if you're confident, mm -hmm. you don't need to do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you know that when I was maybe about 20, 25 years old, I just thought that uh, a person who talks in an aggressive way has a self, have has high self-confidence. But after a while, I just realized that no, no, the person who doesn't raise his voice, the person who can uh, talk in a way that this is not offensive for other people, in my opinion, this person uh, uh, has a self-confidence and uh, has right. has self-esteem. Uh, and uh, among my friends and among my colleagues, my co-authors, I have a lot of such uh, people. So we have been friends for over 30 years never none of us has uh, uh, raised our voice and uh, right. we have uh, never said it's single insulting command but a female lion mm -hmm. will roar and scientists say that the reason they roar is to scare the hell out of a bunch of other animals mm -hmm. to keep them away and that's what i find that most people who start to raise their voice and become uh, abusive or rude or like the female lion they don't want you to get close to them to see who they really are because mm -hmm. if you did it's not very pretty mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's my secret and i'm going to do everything that i can so you don't get to see the real me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and for example uh, you know the, uh, there is this uh uh usual uh, stress response, uh, either uh, fight or fly, or right. these days they also talk about freeze. Right. And to tell you the truth, I do not like uh, any of this. Uh, okay. uh, so, and what would you recommend to me and to our audience? So how not to fight or to fly or not to freeze? When we see the person who is aggressive, we see the person who is hostile uh and if, and i mean there is no my purpose to to run away or not my purpose to uh to start fighting or not my right. purpose to freeze in in hand-to-hand -hand combat mm -hmm. you know if you, if you went to a class to learn a way to defend yourself yes the first uh, of those is to run away mm -hmm. and it's also true for an argument it's best to avoid the argument, mm -hmm. partly by the way we discussed that you don't get emotionally involved and start to attack the other person. You need to be confident about what you do. And it's best not to engage in the argument. Unless you do something like there was an argument that Elon Musk had with a writer, Stephen King, the, the, the prolific mm -hmm. writer. Mm -hmm. And he was accusing Musk that Musk was not very charitable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he wrote back, he said, I donated a hundred million dollars to the war effort in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Stephen King said, oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, that's a real strong factual response. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it ended the conversation. But in, to to Stephen King's credit, he's not a troll. He's not trying to be an idiot just for the hell of it. And if a, somebody is honest and sincere, those you can deal with. When somebody is just looking to make Anna's life miserable at any cost, 
those is those are not easy and you don't want to you know there's a saying i can't remember what language is it in hungarian or is it in english where you know wrestling with pigs mm -hmm. takes you down to that level and you get yeah. hurt mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and if you can avoid it sometimes you won't be able to and how to understand uh when for example to stop talking to someone uh so how to understand that, for example, this debate will not uh, lead you anywhere? Well, you need to set the terms. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to talk to you, not here and not now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you need, to, you need to draw a line in the sand, and then you need to stick to it. If you're not going to stick to whatever you do or you say, then don't say it. You know, this is a big mistake that Obama made with Syria when he said, this is our, you use chemical weapons, this is our line, you step over that line. And then what does Syria do? They are exactly like a little kid. First thing they do is they test the rules. Yeah, actually, I remember my now my daughter is 31 years old. And I remember when she was small, I just told myself that, I'm never going to threaten her by doing something which I will not do. So right. just like be consequent. Uh, if you say something, you do it. Uh, because right. otherwise... You lose your credibility. Uh, yes, 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 yes. As a parent, as a mother, you lose your credibility. You don't want that. And that's part of the self-esteem image going forward. If you lose your credibility with your daughter... You can argue and point at her and call her a bad person, but inside, you're going to feel horrible. Horrible. Yes, and actually sometimes you know, well, parents ask, what should I do? I have told my son 100 times something. I mean, I am just shocked. Just like you do not need to, uh, to, to tell someone 100 times the same thing. Just like... You say something once or maybe twice, and afterwards, afterwards you leave, or afterwards you you, you do something uh, different. But if you repeat the same strategy again and again, so nothing is going to change. Nothing is going to change. One of the ways that people run into that is there are no consequences. I have two families that I'm I, I know in the U.S. that are struggling with kids that moved in back home mm -hmm. over the age of fifty. And they've been living there now six months. They don't pay rent. They get up at noon. There are no rules. There are no expectations. And then they're frustrated that the kid is doing what the kid is doing. Well, why wouldn't they do it? <laughs> yes, I remember it was years ago. My daughter was uh, about uh, 19 years old. Her grades at university were not too good, and I just wrote her a letter, and I pointed out that if next term your grades are going to be below three, you are going to pay me the rent, you are going to pay for your food, you are going to do this and that, if it's over three and 1.5, or if it's over four, and so on. And in a few months' time, her grades were just like over 4.5, 4 when, every, uh, when everyone was, was, was wonderful. Uh, and and she knew and she knew that if I tell it, I would do it. I would do it, uh, William. And uh, <clears throat> what to do if, for example, the person who is next to you mm, won't listen to you, just interrupts you, because it is also the form of hostility. That is correct. Uh, once again, you need to listen to them. Mm -hmm. You need to model the behavior. Mm -hmm. And then set the rule, the consequence. Mary, I'm willing to have a conversation with you. I will listen to you. I expect you to listen to me. Mm -hmm. If you keep interrupting me, the consequence will be that I will stand up and leave. Mm -hmm. Right? I do believe you need to make it clear to the other side what you will do. And then if Mary interrupts you again, you need to stand up and leave. Yes, yes. No, no negotiation. Because it'll kill you. If I know that I can negotiate with Anna 
then I don't have to take Anna seriously. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes. Now, before we finish our uh, interview, uh, how would you summarize uh, to our audience how to handle a hostile audience? Number one, have a few lines. So whatever your typical responses are or were in the past, have a few lines that are practiced, rehearsed. Mm -hmm. So they seem spontaneous, but they're not. Number two, work on, and I don't know for your particular area, for me, it's public speaking and through practicing develop uh, practicing public speaking, I can develop my self-confidence to the point where I am in a non-arrogant way, confident that I know what I am doing. That's part of being a professional like Dr. Phil and like you, Anna. You know what you're saying is a professional, well-justified position. Number three, make your position clear what your expectation is. That level of voice, that intonation, that volume is not acceptable. If you're willing to join the rest of the group, from a volume standpoint, then I'm happy to discuss your point, but I won't let you monopolize the time. We have 100 people here. Everybody deserves to have a question, uh, to the ability to pose a question. And you need to practice this because it's unlikely that if you're a pushover, as they say, at home with your kids, you're likely going to be a pushover at your job, you're gonna be a pushover on the stage. You need to have a character that says, this is Anna. This is what Anna is about. This is what Anna will accept. And this is what Anna will not accept. And eventually that will become your reputation, your brand. And when people, both the trolls and the non-trolls go to Anna's a conference or a presentation, they will expect a certain type of behavior. And you need to consistently model that behavior. And then this, this is almost obvious, is that you need to make sure that anytime you give a presentation or a speech that is important, you are well-rested, you have eaten a good meal, you've had plenty to drink, no alcohol, no drugs, and you are in the best physical shape you can be to deliver that message. Willie, thank you so much for this wonderful interview. I have hundreds of other questions. Maybe next time we will continue okay. this topic. Thank, thank you very you. much, Anna. Uh, okay. Thank you. Bye -bye. Uh, thank you, Willie. Thank you.